this room had. It's just perfumed. With some cheap stuff. Is it your wisdom's thrift to infect my nostrils thus? Or is it to favour the gout in your worship's hand? You are afraid to exercise your pen in your account mm. book. Or do you doubt my credit to discharge your bills? Madam, I hope you've not found my duty with the guilt of sloth or jealousy unapt to your command. You can extenuate your faults with language, sir. But I expect to be obeyed. What hangings have we here? They are arras, madam. Impudence, I know it. Uh, ah, oh, it's me. Hmm. I will have fresher and more rich, not wrought with faces that may scandalise a Christian, with Jewish stories stuffed with corn and camels. You had best wrap all my chambers in wild Irish and make a nursery of monsters here to fright the ladies come to visit me. Madam, I hope... I say I will have other good <laughs> master steward of a finer loom. Mm -hmm. Some silk and silver, if your worship please, to let me be at so much cost. I'll have stories to fit the seasons of the year and change as often as I please. You shall, madam. I am bound to your consent, forsooth. And is my coach brought home? Uh, this morning, I expect it. The inside, as I gave direction, of crimson plush. Oh, crimson camel plush. Ten thousand must consume it! Shall I ride through the streets in penance, wrapped up round in air cloth? Sell it to an alderman. It will serve his wife to go a feasting to their country house, or fetch a merchant's nurse child and come home laden with fruit and... Ooh, Cheesecake. I despise it. The nails adorn it, madam, set in method and pretty forms. But single guilt, I warrant. Oh, no, ma'am. Another solecism. Oh, fie, this fellow will bring me to a consumption with fretting of his ignorance. Some lady had rather never pray than go to church in it. The nails, not double guilt. To market with it. I'd rather be beholding to my aunt the countess for her mourning coach than be disparaged so. Twill hat, sorry, I've cut my own cut, if you see what I mean. I will go back. Another solecism. Mm. Oh, fie, this fellow will bring me to a consumption with fretting at his ignorance. Some lady had rather never pray than go to church in it. The nails, not double guilt, to mark it with it. Twill hack me out to Mile End or convey your city tumblers to be drunk with cream and prunes at Islington. <laughs> well, madam, will you hear me? I'd rather be beholden <laughs> to my aunt, the countess, for her mourning coach than be disparaged so. Shall any juggling tradesman be at charge to shoe his running horse with gold? And shall my coach nails be but single guilt? How dare these knaves abuse me so? Oh, safe to hear me speak. Is my sedan yet finished? And liveries for my men mules? According as I gave charge. Yes, madam, it is finished. Ah. But without tilting plumes at the four corners. The scarlet is pure, but not embroidered. What mischief were it to your conscience were my coach lined with tissue and my harness covered with needlework? If my sedan had all the story of the prodigal embroidered with pearl? Yes, madam. I know it is your own cost. I am but your steward and was, would, would discharge my duty the best way. You have been pleased to hear me. It is not for my profit that I manage your estate and save expense, but for your honour, madam. How so my honour? Though you hear it not, men's tongues are liberal in your character since you begin to live thus high. I know your fame is I would best make you my governor. Audacious varlet. How dare you interpose your doting counsel? 
find your affairs with more obedience. Or I shall ease you of an office, sir. Must I be limited to please your honour? Or for the vulgar breath, confine my pleasures? I will pursue them in what shapes I fancy, here and abroad. My entertainment shall be oftener and more rich. Who shall control me? I live in the Strand, where whither few ladies come to live and purchase more than fame. I will be hospitable then, and spare no cost that may engage all generous report to trumpet forth my bounty and my bravery till the court envy and remove. I'll have my house, the academy of wits, who shall exalt it with sack and sturgeon write panegyrics of my feasts and praise the method of my witty superfluities. The horses shall be taught with frequent waiting upon my gates to stop in their career towards Charing Cross, spite of the coachman's fury, and not a tilter but shall strike his plume when he sails by my window. My balcony shall be the courtier's idol and more gazed at than all the pageantry at Temple Bar by country clients. Sure, my lady's mad. Take that for your ill manners. Thank you, madam. I will do a less quicksilver in your fingers. <laughs>